Today we're going to look at JavaScript's built-in error constructor. In any website or application that uses JavaScript, you're likely to encounter times when you want to throw an error. I like to use the error constructor in all instances because it provides a reliable and consistent way to report errors, which means you can write code that always expects certain conditions. Unless, of course, you're using third-party modules, in which case things are somewhat out of your control. But it's still generally a good idea to use it in your own code. You create a new error object with the following syntax. You actually don't need the new because the error constructor will also behave as a function and return the new object, but I prefer using the new keyword so that it's clear you're creating a new child object. Do what you like. The important thing is to note that the object that's generated contains three properties. Error.prototype.constructor, error.prototype.message, and error.prototype.name. You don't need to worry about the first one, constructor, right now because it's mainly important for creating custom error types, which we're not going to talk about until next week. Message is probably the most important property since it's the one you're most likely to display. Name can also be useful in many circumstances. Oh, by the way, some browsers include other properties on error objects such as error.filename, the file where the error occurred, or error.stack, stack trace. These can be very useful but are outside the scope of this particular tutorial. Let's create, throw, and inspect a simple error. Here's the code. I'm going to get rid of this first. Let's run this code. As you can see, our name is error, our message is, you done screwed up, buddy, and our constructor is pointing to JavaScript's native error function. As mentioned, the message is generally the most useful part of the error, since it's theoretically telling you what went wrong. For example, a much more useful message might be something like, no data was returned from the remote resource when an XHR call fails. It's really up to you how specific you want to make your error messages. Now, having a name of error isn't terribly useful, which is why we don't pay much attention to it, but JavaScript comes with several built-in, more specific error constructors, which make the name property more significant and useful. For example, if you're asking the user for a value within a range, let's say 0 to 500, and they give you 640, you could throw a range error. Observe. Save that, run this code, and as you can see, the name value is no longer error, but instead range error, which could be useful either to display directly to the user or to run some logic against in order to modify your error messages in some way. Let's quickly go through the other built-in error types. Eval error, used if an exception is generated when evaluating a function using the global eval object. Don't know what that means? Drop me a line, maybe I'll do a tutorial on it. Reference error used to indicate that a non-existent variable was referenced. JavaScript throws this type of error by default when you reference a variable you never declared. Syntax error, used to indicate broken code. JavaScript throws this type of error when what you've coded doesn't match up with the expected syntax of the language. Type error, used when a variable or parameter is not a valid type. JavaScript throws this type of error when, for example, you try to use an object property as a function when it's not a function. URI error, used when you try to parse a malformed URI or using a global URI function incorrectly. JavaScript throws this type of error when you pass it a URI it can't decode. Here's some simple code to show off a type error. Save that and we should get those values. And we do. You'll note that my string is, perhaps unsurprisingly, a string. Trying to use it as a function causes a predictable error, which we can catch and then log. I'll be honest, it's pretty rare that I use any of these. If I encounter them, it's mainly because I screwed something up and the JS engine itself is throwing them. For backend and frontend work, I typically just stick with new error and a useful message. Sometimes, though, it'd be really useful for the object to contain additional information or functionality. In those instances, we can create a custom error which we'll do next week. See you then.